Hey guys, it's Dr. Sarah, and I, I promised you in one of my previous videos that I would make a video about my rings. So I thought I would shoot that right now. I'm waiting for the sauna to heat up. Uh, I just finished all my Zoom calls for the day. Don't you love sheltering in place? So I thought I'd talk about rings. And, um, you know, the ring that I was talking about in the previous video was my aura ring. And that's this ring right here. I've had this ring for a few years, and this ring is pretty interesting because it gives you a lot of data about how you're doing on a physiologic basis. So many of my patients wear this ring, and I like to look at their dashboards. What do I like? I like how they have an algorithm that creates a readiness score each day. And here's how I use the readiness score. When I have a readiness score that's 80 or higher, or, you know, on a couple of occasions, I've been in the 90s. That's a day where I can go hard with exercise. So I know that I can do, for instance, a power zone max ride on the Peloton, or I can go running. I can do intervals when I go running. I can do heavy weights. So I, I know that my body can kind of match the level of what I think of as hormesis, you know, kind of that positive stress that you can put on your body with burst training, or with high intensity interval training. If my readiness is worse, if it's for instance in the 70s or even lower, then I know that that's gotta be an easier day. It's gotta be like a low impact ride on the Peloton. It's gotta be a walk um, or, you know, kind of intermixed with jogging. It's gotta be uh, lighter weights and just going easier, maybe taking a nap, maybe weeding in the garden. So I, I really like to use the readiness score. Part of the readiness score is your temperature. And I talked about the data that we have from the World Health Organization on the three predictors that are the best right now for determining if you have uh, SARS-CoV-2 and your risk for um, COVID-19. And those are your temperature, your respiratory rate, and your oxygen saturation. So that brings us to my other ring, which is my Wellview oxygen saturation. I've got the little details right here. Here's what it looks like. I don't have any sort of um, professional relationship with any of these companies, but I just like this ring because it, it tells me about oxygen saturation. So what I know is that I'm healthy when my O2 sat is above 96%. We know that that's a good place for a healthy person. And when it starts to drop, that can be a sign of infection or some other problems. Um, I also found that when I was flying around so much before this uh, current pandemic, my oxygen saturation would drop pretty low on these long flights. And I, I just wonder about that. I wonder about, you know, are there long-term consequences? Does it lead to other uh, stress and maybe loss of homeostasis inside the body? I got a really good question on social media that I wanted to address, which is, hey, Dr. Sarah, you're wearing all these rings. They have EMFs, electromagnetic fields. Are you worried about the EMFs? So I wanna talk about that for a minute. I actually looked at all the science that we have on EMFs for my latest book, Brain Body Diet, which I have here. And uh, I just wanna read to you what we know about EMFs and why it is that I use them sparingly. So EMFs, we know that they have the following effects on the body. EMFs increase free radicals. They trigger the cellular stress response. This is really important to know. And it causes breaks in DNA. It affects immune function, both positively and negatively. So I think it's important to not cherry pick the data. That's one thing that tends to happen, especially with conspiracy theorists, is that they look at the science and they take all the science that supports their worldview, and they don't talk about a balanced mix of the positive and the negative in support or refuting their stand. And I think it's important not to cherry pick to really present a balanced view. So in terms of immune health, there's both positive effects and more negative effects. There may be some small increased risk of Alzheimer's, brain cancer, such as gliomas and meningiomas, and male infertility, but at best, the evidence is modest. So 
The problem is it's really hard to show an association between EMFs and adverse health outcomes. We know about the DNA breaks and things like that, but whether that actually translates into an adverse health outcome, we don't totally know. So the data is fair when it comes to Alzheimer's disease and brain cancers such as, such as gliomas and meningiomas. And for that reason, I don't use EMFs around my brain. Now, the data that I get from using the Aura Ring and the small amount of EMF that comes from it, the information is so actionable that it's worth it to me.